Hello, my name is Jesus Martin from Intel team, and I'm going to share with you some insights regarding memory subsystem IP for Intel IGLX7, S, and I series. The memory subsystem IP is a high level solution on top of the external memory interface IP for Intel IGLX7, F, and I series FPGAs, providing an easy way to instantiate various external memory interfaces with application level optimizations. Depending on your requirements, the memory subsystem provides scalable and composable options that you can use to create effective turnkey solutions. You can easily instantiate the memory subsystem IP through the Intel Quartus Prime software. The memory subsystem IP provides the following components up to eight external memory interface instances, a soft logic adapter to boost memory throughput by traffic shaping, up to eight content addressable memories, also called lookup IPs or CAMs, and device feature discovery support for compatible Linux software drivers. Each external memory interface instance will include a physical layer interface, also called as PHY, which builds the data path and manages timing transfer between internal FPA logic and external memory devices. A memory controller, which implements all the memory commands and protocol level requirements. Also, it will contain one image calibration IP to calibrate the interfaces on the top row and one image calibration IP for interfaces located on the bottom row. The memory specific adapter, also known as MSA, is implemented in SoftLogic to shape the incoming traffic to improve performance by improving the throughput. It comes with features like dynamic auto precharge. Based on the traffic pattern, it automatically issues precharge commands for proactively closing unused rows and pages. The write data replication feature breaks the RAM into identical replicas. If you have 8 GB of RAM and write copies is set to 4 replicas, you will only access to 2 GB. So when the user issues a read request, MSA will pick the best replica to get the read data. This will improve read throughput. The bank spreading feature spreads reads and write requests equally across banks to warranty cycling between banks. MSA also comes with functional features like ECC error forwarding. The content addressable memories, better known as CAMs or lookup IPs, are associated array data structures that works as a high-speed hash table implemented on the FPGA. CAMs contain an AXI streaming interface for request and response for lookup operations. It can return a lookup response every cycle. Also contains an AXI Lite interface that handles operations to manage the lookup database. Memory subsystem supports up to three types of CAMs. For exact match, meaning we expect only one response per key, you can use the multi bin lookup cam. And binary cam, also for one response per key. But when you expect more than one result per key, the ternary cam uses a wildcard match algorithm. This table shows the difference between all cams. You can notice that MBL uses off chip memory, whereas VCAM and TCAM uses on chip memory. VCAM uses Cuckoo filter algorithm for exact match, and TCAM uses wildcard match, and MBL uses exact match multi bin lookup. VCAM and TCAM both support key width up to 512 bits and up to 4K entries. MBL supports key width up to 1024 bits and up to 60 million entries. Notice that this is dependent on the memory capacity since it is uses of chip memory. All CAMs support lookup, insert, delete, and flush operations, but CAM, BCAM also supports modify operations. Please refer to Memory Subsystem IP User Guide to know more about this IP and its components. When opening the memory subsystem IP from Quartus IP catalog, you will find this 
top level GUI where you will be configuring the memory subsystem IP. The main steps for successfully configuring are defining the number of memory interfaces, their type and their location, and then defining the amount of CAMs that you will need. In the first section, the memory interface section, you will need to add an instance per image interface and define if it's going to be located on north or south IO row. If you want to add a CAM, you will need to add another memory interface, but select this time as on chip interface. Because remember that BCAM and TCAM uses on chip memory. If we want to use MBL, we will need to add another external memory interface because remember, MBL uses off chip memory. On applications interfaces section, you will need to select the required interfaces. Select a storage for using IMIF or external memory interface, then select associative storage when using any type of CAMs, such as BCAM, TCAM, or MBL. In this example, we are using one IMIF, one CAM, and we are also we, we, are, we are going to be using an MBL. So for MBL, you also need to use associative storage. Then on data flow section, the table contains number of columns that is equal to the number of memory interfaces that you created you will need to interconnect the interfaces with the application interfaces by marking the corresponding checkbox. For example, on, on this design, we are using one IMIF that is connected as a storage. The second interface will be a CAM used as BCAM or TCAM using M20K or on-chip memory. So we will need to interconnect the CAM here, both the associative storage for the hash and table and for the key. And second, for the MBL, we also need to interconnect, but this time with the DDR4 image. If you remember, we select the memory interface number two as external memory interface because we are going to use an MBL. So we need to interconnect both associative storage key and hash table on the second or, or the number two DDR4 interface. And see this warning that says that for associative storage number two, uses a CAM instance configured as EMBL. Then when you are done uh, selecting and interconnecting all the memory interfaces, you will need to click on this checkbox to generate all the IPs within the memory subsystem. After clicking, it will take some time, but after that, when it's done, we are going to be able to go and dive into the packages subsystem with the platform designer view. When all the IPs were correctly generated, the next step is going to dive into package subsystem. When clicking this button, a new Platform Designer window will appear where we are going to be able to see all the IPs in the system view and we are going to be able to configure all the IPs. Here, just, we will just need to click on close and this is the system view. Here you can see all the IPs that were generated. And for customizing each of the IPs, you need to select on the IP. And on the right side, you will see all the parameters that you can customize. In this case, I select the image zero. Here, I can expand this and see all the parameters that I, I am able to customize. For example, on this case, I am able to change from ULIM to component. And when I do this change, Memory subsystem will automatically do the changes necessary for match all the design and complete all the changes necessary to compile and to test without any issues. In this case, we have 
two external memory interfaces. Remember, first one was for storage. The second one will be used as the uh, interface for MBL because MBL uses external memory. So since we are using two external memory interfaces, one for storage and one for MBL, we have two MSA instances. So if we click on the MSA instances, we are going to be able to enable the features like auto precharge mode, uh, the number of copies, uh, also the bank spreading. If we change something is the same, we can change something here and memory subsystem will uh, update all the necessary things to make this work. Here we can see that we have two CAMs. CAM0 is a CAM that is used as on-chip memory. We know that because it's not connected to any of the external memory interfaces or any MSA. And here, when we click on CAM, we are going to be able to select between exact match or wildcard match, meaning BCAM or TCAM. But if we go to the second CAM, we see that it's an MBL CAM. And we also can see that it's connected to the memory specific adapter one. So after configuring all the IPs, what you need to do is only click on save and then close this view. After closing this view, you are going to be redirected to the top level GUI. And here you are going to be able to generate the example design. For the example design, we'll generate all the files necessary for synthesis and also we'll generate simulation files. To know which simulations are supported, please check on our latest release notes.